we've decided to record uh, short webinars uh, to cover some things that we would like you to know and apply in order to be successful in our courses. First point we would like to make is please name your translation and interpreting files, and I'm going to explain you why. The first reason is that we are training you for the professional industry, so when clients send you a file for translation, it will come with a name or numbers, and the expectation from the client or the agency is that you will return the file with the same name, uh, with some changes, including your name and the language that you have translated the uh, text into. So this is a fridge manual, as you can see here. And uh, let's suppose I'm translating it into Arabic. So I begin the translation and then I want to save the file. I am using Word processor, uh, Word for Windows. Um, so the expectation usually is that the file will be named exactly as the original, then you can add your name, and usually the language into which you are translating. And that's it. Make sure you, uh, you double check the instructions from your uh, instructors uh, about how they want you to name uh, your files. And the second reason is that your instructors receive hundreds of e uh, emails, uh, but also um, assignments from students. And when they're ready to grade them, they sometimes do download the whole batch uh, of files. And it's very hard to locate whose file is whose. And, and so it, it becomes really uh, complicated. The second point I wanted to make here is um, spell checking and reviewing your written assignments and translation. So if you are writing your papers in English, uh, you need to review them and, and double check if everything is correct, grammar, punctuation, and etc. If you're working in translations, the same thing applies. So a uh, word for Windows, uh, you know, has um, spell checker and other word processors do as well. Uh, sometimes they come with the software, the English one usually comes as default, uh, but not all languages are available. Sometimes you need to purchase them. So for example, this is a text in Portuguese. I have, you have, you go here and you set the proofing language. And uh, this one is European Portuguese. So I'm gonna use Portugal. And immediately you will see that some words are underlined in red. Uh, this one, I will leave it as is because it's the name of the service and usually we don't translate names. Uh, but when you come here, you will see that something is wrong. Uh, I know that the accent marker is missing. So if I right click on it, I will have the option here. Uh, same thing with this one. So this is a very helpful tool and helps you improve the quality of your work. So make sure you spell check your work before you submit it to your um, instructors and your clients in the future. And um, while you are a student at UMass Amherst, Amherst, you have this wealth of resources available to you. This is the webpage of the Information Technology uh, Division, and you will see here that they, we have supported software and downloads. There are free uh, softwares available to you and discounted ones. So make sure you double check those. I think Word um, Office uh, is available for free for all students, but there are also a lot of good stuff there that you should check. Uh, the next point I wanna make is track changes in Word. Uh, sometimes you will be asked to review the translation of other translators in the real world, uh, and clients and agency will want to see that, that in track changes, so I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, this is, again, the same text in Portuguese. I'm going to activate track changes in Word, which is here. And let's say I am correcting this word. delete the other. Um, let's say I want to delete this. This is not correct. So as you can see, the changes appear uh, as you make them. 
Um, you can also add comments. You highlight and then you add comments. Um, one thing important in, in track changes in Word is that you have these uh, two options, all markup or simple markup. Uh, simple markup will make things disappear, uh, so it's not easy to see. Uh, so you want to have all markup uh, activated uh, when you're working with track changes. Uh, you will receive uh, your review uh, from your language reviewers uh, with track changes. So I'm going to show you some options that you will encounter. Sometimes it will be a PDF file, and this is what it will look like. There's, there are comments, there are things marked on this translation. Uh, sometimes it will be a, a Word file, and the same thing is true. You will see the comments uh, everywhere. Again, make sure that all markup is available so you can see everything right away. Uh, so if it's simple markup, as you can see, things disappear. So make sure all markup is activated. Uh, the other thing that's important is where is the feedback on Blackboard? So I'm going to show you how to see that in your Blackboard shell quickly. So this is our main page. Uh, on the website. Uh, if you go to our coursework page here on the left and scroll down, you will see this really uh, uh, cool link to this resource area, student orientation and resource area. And this was created for online students. So you would go here to Blackboard Learn. So I encourage all of you to review this information. It's, it's extremely important. Um, and you will find your feedback in your grades. So let me show you what that looks like. So you go to your Blackboard shell, you go to my grades, and you will see your assignment graded and sometimes a comment. Uh, this is a blue icon that indicates that there's a comment there, that there's a feedback, so you click on it and then you're able to see the feedback. Sometimes it, there will be an attached file, so you click on it and see it as well. If there's nothing there, it means that the instructor has not added any comments. 